Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make your very own Discord bot using JavaScript. The first thing you're going to need is Node.js, so go ahead and install it right here if you haven't. I'll put a link in the description. Next up, you're going to need some kind of code editing software. I'm using Visual Studio Code, but you can use whatever you prefer. I'll leave a link to that as well in the description. Once you have those two installed, you're going to need to navigate to discord.com slash developers slash applications. You might have to log in and you should be greeted by this screen. As you can see, I already have an existing bot, but we'll make a new one today. So go ahead and click New Application. Now go ahead and name your bot whatever you want. I'm going to call mine Code with Chase. And here we go. We have our name, our description, and some tags that you can add later if you'd like. But really what we need to do is move to Bot right here. So this is going to be the name that shows up for our bot, Code with Chase. And here you can go ahead and click to set any images you would like. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uncheck Public Bot. We don't want anyone adding this bot right off the bat. Uh, it's going to be a while before it's worth using. Next up, you're going to scroll down to Privilege Gateway Intents, and you're going to check all three of these. So one, two, three, and you're going to click Save Changes. By checking these boxes, we're allowing our bot to see things like messages and server members. Next up, click OAuth2. Click URL Generator. Once you're in this URL generator, you're going to see a couple of different options. You want to select Bot first off, and then you're going to check Applications.Commands. These two things will allow Discord to know that this is a bot, and that it will also allow us to use things like slash commands. Next up, you're going to have to assign your bot permissions. I'm going to click Administrator for the sake of this video. This assigns our bot every single permission here. In the future, you may want to go back and review what this bot has access to, especially if you want to get it approved at a large scale. Discord really does care that you're not giving your bot too many permissions it may not need. But for now, it's fine. Once you've given your bot its permissions, scroll down to the bottom and you'll see a URL right here. Copy it. Then go ahead and move to the Discord server you'd like to add your bot to. Paste that link in. Click it. Authorize your bot to join. Go through the captchas. And there we go. As you can see, our code with Chase bot is here. Another thing you'll probably notice is that our bot is offline. We're going to fix that next. I've created a folder called CWC bot. And I've gone ahead and opened it in Visual Studio Code. Next up, we're going to have to initialize our project. And we're going to do that by opening our terminal and typing npm init-y. This will go ahead and create a package JSON for us that's going to tell our bot where to begin. We're going to go ahead and edit our file here, and we're going to type source slash index.js. Following that, we're going to go ahead and make that source folder. So source, and then we need to add that index.js. So index.js. And now we've got the very basis of our bot here. Now let's start importing some of the packages we need. So that's going to begin with npm i discord.js. And that's going to be what really does the bulk of our work here is this discord.js package. Following that, we're going to npm i dot env npm i notamon. Now these three packages should be all we need to get started. Let's go ahead and import our discord js package. So const, we're going to leave this as an open curly brace equals require discord.js. And then we're going to add a couple of things here. So client first off, and then intense bit field next. These two things are all we're really going to need for now. Below that, you're going to do const path equals require node path. Then const fs equals require fs. Both path and fs are built in the node, so they won't require any additional installation. Below those three, we're going to go ahead and do require dot env config. And we'll come back to this later. It's going to go ahead and store some of our secret tokens. Then we're going to do const client equals new client. So we're going to go ahead and initialize our client here. And inside, it's going to take an argument named intents. Now, this will be an array, and it's going to hold all the permissions we need to give our bot the power to read messages, see who's in our Discord server, and so on. I'll type them out and cut ahead, and you can copy. Now, these four are all we really need for now. It gives us access to guilds, guild members, guild messages, and message content. 
Now, if you're a bit confused why you're seeing guild, guild is how Discord refers to servers. So if you see guild, think server. Now we're about ready to take our bot online. So next step, come over here again, create a new file called .env. In here, we're going to create a variable called token, and we're going to set it to our Discord bot token. Now, where do you get that? I'll show you in a sec. You have to come back to our Discord developer portal, head back to bot. And right here, you're going to see a button that says reset token, and that's where we're going to get it from. So go ahead and click it. Yes, it's probably going to ask you for two-factor. I'll fill that out real quick. And once that's complete, you'll see your token right here. Go ahead and click copy and make sure you never, ever, ever give this out to anybody. It will allow them to control your bot however they would like. And it's why we're using this environment file to keep it safe. So now that we're back at our token, go ahead and copy and paste our token in here, save, and head back to our index.js. We're going to come down two lines, client.login, and then process.env, and then token. So this token matches our variable here, token. Now let's go ahead and try starting our bot. So go ahead into your terminal, type notamon. And it looks like everything's all good, so let's go check back in Discord. Now that you can see that our bot is online, we can go ahead and start adding commands. Now that we're back in our code, let's go over to source and create a folder called events. This is going to contain all of our events and keep our code much neater. Here's where path and our file system packages will come in. So go ahead and type const events path equals path dot join underscore underscore their name events. And so this variable is just going to go ahead and look for that events folder. Next up, we want to iterate through each of our event files. So const event files equals fs dot read directory sync events path. So we're going to go ahead and pass that folder into this. And then we're going to go ahead and filter it down so that we're only getting files that end with JS. File dot ends with dot JS. Now I'm not sure if anything else ever ends up in this folder by accident or if you ever need to put more stuff in there. This will only look at the JavaScript files. Now, in our events folder, let's go ahead and create an event called ready.js. And this is going to be our on ready event. So go ahead and import discord.js again. So equals require discord.js. And then we're going to go ahead and take two new things out of here events and activity type. This will allow us to access all of Discord's events, and this will allow us to access the activity that our bot is up to. So next up, module.exports equals object. We're going to give it a name, events.clientready. So this is a built-in event. When our client is successfully logged in, it will fire. And then once is up next, true, because we only want this to fire once. Then execute client console.log ready and then logged in as client dot user dot tag. And all that's gonna do is tell us that we're logged in as our Discord name. So code with chase. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and set a custom activity event for our bot. So client dot user dot set activity name. So what we're going to call this is code with chase. And then what kind of activity is this? So activity type that comes from up here. And as you can see, we have a couple of different ones playing, streaming, watching, custom. We're going to go ahead and say watching. Now this is ready. This is a this is a finished event that will work. So let's go ahead and head back to our index.js. Now I'm going to go ahead and write out a for loop, then I'll explain it line by line. Now go ahead and pause the video if you need to, and just go ahead and copy this for loop down. There's a couple of things happening here. We have our file path, which is going to be new and created from our events path, which refers to this events folder. And that's also going to take every single file that it finds in here, so ready.js. 
that's going to go ahead and import that function that we just created here. Remember how we told our event that we only wanted to run once? So we're going to go ahead and see. If event.once returns true, then we're going to use client.once. We're going to go ahead and run that event name. So that's uh, the, the client.ready. Then we're going to go ahead and pass any additional arguments using a spread operator here because you never know how many you're going to have. We're going to go ahead and execute it. And then now, had I set that once to false, we would use client.on. And that means this event is going to fire every single time. Now, we're just about ready to fire this thing up. So why don't we go ahead and type in Notamon. And as you can see, ready, logged in as code with Chase 9604. We now have a very clean way of managing all of our events. And if we head back to Discord, we'll see not only is our bot online, but it also has the activity of watching code with Chase. We've gone ahead and added our first custom feature. Now let's go ahead and make one more event called message create. And this will fire whenever a new message is sent. So message create.js. Then we're gonna need to import our discord.js again. So require discord.js. Then of course we need our events. So module I can type dot exports equals object name events dot message create right there is our event and then once now this is going to be false because we want this to happen every single time an event occurs so every time a message is created we want this event to trigger next i'm going to go ahead and do execute client and we'll go ahead and fill out our function here. Before we do that, let's actually rename this argument to message because that's what it's going to represent. So if we come down here, console.log message.content. So this is going to go ahead, this should send back our message content. So if I type in a word, it should show up in our console down here. Let's try it out. So test message. And as you can see, this message shows up in our console. So now we're logging every single message sent to our server, and that's going to allow us to do a lot of fun things. But let's start simple. So if message.content equals doc, then we're going to go ahead and respond with message.reply. So let's try that out. Back in our server, let's type in duck. And as you can see, we get quack in response. So with just those two examples, you can really extrapolate the spot. I'm going to leave it here today, but in the future, I'm going to continue to show you how you can build out the spot more and more. But with what we have now, I think you can use your own creativity and really expand it and have some fun. Thank you guys for watching, and please subscribe if you want to see more Discord tutorials. I'll be making a bunch more in the future, and I'll show you how you can really take your bot to the next level.